So, today we are here to continue in our classes about the Brazilian legal system and we are going to discuss today, to talk today about the judiciary power and not only the judiciary power but some words and some considerations about uh, the, how to become a lawyer, how to obtain the law degree and the structure of the judiciary power in Brazil. So let's start. So, judiciary power. The judiciary power in Brazil comprises the Supreme Federal Court, the Superior Courts, that are five in our country, the Federal Regional Courts, State Courts, and Federal and State Judges. Well, the judiciary is totally independent and the Federal Constitution ensured its administrative and financial autonomy. Thus, it can prepare its budget proposal and send it to the National Congress, which is a very important prerogative. What I mean, the judiciary itself prepare the budget proposal and they do not need the executive to send it to the Congress. Okay? It, as I was saying, it can prepare and send a bill directly to the legislative body about its administrative, administra administrative organization. The prerogative to send a bill to the legislative is deferred only to the Supreme Federal Court, the Superior Courts, and in the state level to the appellate appellate courts, okay? So, that is, uh, the prerogative is not open to all uh, judicial bodies in our country, just the superior courts and the federal, uh, the Supreme Federal Court, as I said before. As in other democracies, in Brazil, the judge can only decide when a party files a case. As such, it is forbidden for a judge to start a case and decide on it. How to become a judge? In Brazil, with the exception of some offices in the Superior Military Court, only people with a law degree can become a judge. Well, there is a discussion here that I wa I'd like to talk about. Can the President of the Republic appoint someone with no law degree to the Supreme Federal Court? I, it's a, for me, it's a foolish discussion. But even though it is foolish, the discussion uh, is present in some law classes here and, and some discussion here about this subject. If a president, if the president of the republic can appoint a Supreme Court member without a law degree, why this discussion exists? Because the federal constitution does not identify the education requirements to, in order to appoint a, a, a Supreme Federal Court member. Even though the Constitution does not require a nominee with a law degree, it refers that the nominee must be a native Brazilian over 35 and under 65 years of age and of notable juri juridical learning and spotless reputation. Let's try to explain uh, with another uh, considerations about lawyers and other things 
how this discussion is a little foolish. Well, the Article 133 of the Federal Constitution says that the lawyer is indispensable, okay? Is indispensable to the justice system. It means that if someone needs to settle a dispute, he, she must hire a lawyer. He, she must be represented by an attorney which is indispensable before court. And, and who says that? The Federal Constitution in the Article 133. Beside the Constitution, a federal law is more specific about this issue. The, a federal law here in Brazil, a statute, demands the indispensability of the presence of an attorney when someone needs to be in court. There are just a few exceptions for those who want to represent themselves before a court without a lawyer. Among them, habeas corpus, labor cases, and cases that are not over 40 minimum of 40 minimum wages. In this scenario, in this scenario, someone do, uh, does not need to hire a lawyer. I will repeat: habeas corpus, labors, labor cases, and cases under 40, the value of 40 minimums of age. It, it is the ceiling, okay? 40 minimums uh, wages. So, considering these aspects of the Brazilian system, it is reasonable to conclude that when the federal constitution demands that in order to be appointed for the Supreme Federal Court, the citizen must have a notable, a notable juridical, juridical learning. Uh, of course, just lawyers, judges, or law professors would have that, because in our system there is no other way for someone to get notable juri juridical learning, or in other words, there is no other way for someone to be considered as a jurist and therefore be appointed to the Supreme Federal Court by the President of the Republic. Well, let's see now how, uh, how to become a lawyer and how to become a judge in Brazil and going before the courts. Okay, let's see it. So, let's see. An ordinary person can't, here in our country, here in Brazil, an ordinary person can't present himself, herself, before court. He, she must be represented by a lawyer. That's the rule. That's the rule number one to talk about this issue. But, as it, it is a rule, there is some few exceptions. There are few exceptions for this rule. As I said before, I will mention three exceptions. Habeas corpus, cases of habeas corpus, labor cases, and some cases under foreign minimum wages. Okay? That's an uh, exception to this rule. To become a lawyer, there are two indispensable and mandatory steps. Two. First, the first step. The person must attend law school for five years. The first step, okay? The person must attend a lawyer, a law school for five years. Okay? Second step. Then he, she must pass the bar exam conducted by the Bar Association of Brazil, the Bar Association of Brazil, in the state he, she elects to make the exam. So the second step 
to become a lawyer. I will repeat, five years in law school, then if you finish your law school, you go to the bar examination conducted by the Bar Association of Brazil, and then he, she must pass the exam. Just few pass here. To become a judge, to become a judge, the person must have a law degree and three-year law experience and must be approved in a public examination reg regards to the type of judge he or she wants to be. State judge, federal judge, or labor judge. In the public examination to be a judge, the federal constitution requires the participation of the bar association. The purpose is to provide an external guidance, supervision, and monitor the examination for fairness. Okay? So, let's repeat. To become a judge, the guy must pass in a public examination. The public examination has the participation of the bar association. And the, the, the purpose is to provide an external guidance. There are some exceptions to the public exam to, to the public exam to become a judge. There are some exceptions here in our country. One fifth one fifth very important criteria one fifth of the seats of some courts shall be occupied by members of the public prosecution office, members of the public prosecution office, and lawyers, both with over 10 years in office and who also possess professional activity, respectively, 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 I'm sorry. The, this doctrine, the doctrine calls it constitutional fifth. That's the constitutional fifth criteria. That means, I will repeat, one-fifth of the seats of a court is for public prosecution and for lawyers. Okay? Lawyers. Oh my God. Well, the president, another, another exception for the uh, public, uh, uh, the, that someone who can become a judge without uh, submitting uh, a, a public exam. The president of the republic holds the power to appoint to the Senate the members of the Supreme Federal Court, the most important court of the land. <clears throat> the rule is the same of the American, the USA Constitution, the Constitution of the uh, North uh, United States. So the president holds the power to appoint to the Senate the members of the Supreme Federal Court. Well, Military courts accept military personnel for some seats, just some, not all, which means that these military judges do not need to go to the law school. Members of the military superior court are appointed by the president of the republic and must be also approved by the Senate. There are no elected judges in Brazil in any level. I, have, I, I want to emphasize that because as we know in the United States, there are, in some states, there are judges that are elected to the position. In Brazil, we do not have this possibility. We do not have this rule. In Brazil, to become a, ju a judge, the guy must pass 
in a public exam or to be appointed by the constitutional fifth criteria. So we saw how to become a judge and how to become a lawyer here in Brazil. How, how someone or, or what someone need to do to become a lawyer or to become a judge. I know that in the US there are two names, as far as I know, two names to refer to judge. There is judge and there is justice. Let's see how we call someone who belongs to the judiciary system. Let's see now how we call here in Brazil someone that is a member of the judiciary system. Let's see. Okay, as I said, in the US, as far as I know, there are two ways to refer to someone that belongs to the judiciary. Two ways. First, judge. Second, justice. Uh, in, in the United States, judge is general. A general uh, there is a general meaning, a general word is the member of the judiciary in the first level, a single judge or member of a panel. Justice in the US is used for those in several states who belong to the high, high courts as the Supreme Court of the United States or the appellate courts. In Brazil, the federal constitution Regarding, to, regarding the members of the judiciary branch refers to the three cat categories of public officers. Three categories. In the US, as far as I know, two. Judge and justice. In Brazil, we have three categories. I will write right here. We have the first one, juiz. That means that in English is judge. Juiz, judge. We have the second, desembargador. Which means justice in English. Okay? Desembargador. And the third category we have here in our system, ministro, which means also justice. If you want to translate to English, we translate in this way. Well, let's see. The federal constitution uses the expression also auditor judge because I said that there are just three but I want to refer to another one but uh, the auditor judge we have also here in Brazil auditor judge uh, judge why I didn't put it here because auditor judge is not very common there are just few members of the federal military justice in the first level. That's why I didn't put it here. And sometimes, sometimes, uh, here in Brazil it's common to call the auditor judge as a judge. That's why I did not mention 
in the three categories, okay? So, repeating, auditor judge is used for the members of the federal military justice. But there are just few in number, okay? It is also important to point out that in Brazil there is no panel at the first level, just a single judge that can be a state or a federal judge. There is no, no panel in Brazil. We don't have panel. Yeah? The federal judge here in our country deals with federal matters. It means that when the federal government is part of a lawsuit, the subject will be decided by a federal judge. Federal judge just make decisions in federal subjects. The federal judiciary branch has a type of subdivision that is the, a subdivision in the federal judiciary branch. There is labor judge. So in the federal judiciary, federal judiciary system, we have federal judge, uh, I'm sorry, judge, and we have labor judge. Okay? So, let's explain how the labor justice, uh, how the machinery, how it, how it works. If an employee has a disagreement, a kind of disagreement with the company he she works for, he she works for, concerning his, her activity within the company, the case will be decided by the labor judge. So, labor judge, labor judge, right here, that belongs to the federal judiciary system, okay? Labor judge just decides cases that refers to a work contract, I mean to a labor contract between an employee and the employer when they have a disagreement concerning the contract, concerning his her activity within the company. Frequently, the labor judges decide cases related to the contract between the employer and the employee, as I said before. Something that wasn't performed in the labor contract. Well, I so I said, I explained about the federal judge that deals with federal matters, federal subjects. I explained about the labor judge that is a subdivision of the federal judiciary. And now I will uh, explain about the state judge. What the state judge does? Well, he deals, he deals with any subject except federal and labor, and labor matters, okay? If someone wants to get a divorce, okay, which judge, which system they will look for? They will look for the state judge. Just the state judge can perform a, a divorce, okay? Or something related to a... Um, uh, an inheritance. Who will deal with the state judge? Why? Because we have here state judge, federal judge, and labor judge. And the federal judge just deals with federal subject. Labor judge with labor matters. And the state judge with everything except this, this, and this. Okay? Let's uh, let's see other examples. If a citizen has an issue and he, she needs to settle it before the judiciary, the competence rests in a state judge. There are, by law, some alternatives 
to, deter, to determine I, the competence, the competence, to, to settle the competence, to find the competence. In general, the competence of the state judge to decide the cases will be de uh, determined among one of these alternatives. First, the place that the author or the defendant resides. Second, the place mentioned in the contract. And third, the place where the, the, problem, the problem occurred. Very important, very important thing concerning this subject. In Brazil, there is no jury trial for civil, civil cases. No jury trial. In any circumstance, there is just, just a judge trial. Uh, I, I remember that uh, once I was in Delaware and I was talking to a lawyer there, a professor in the uh, University of Delaware, and I said to, to the, that lawyer, to the lawyer, that in Brazil there is no jury trial. And he said that is a great advantage for our country. He said that the system of ju uh, jury trial for civil cases, jury trial for civil cases in the United States of America is not as good as if a judge has had to, had to decide alone. Okay, so maybe apparently in this specific specific subject, our system is a little better than the U.S. system because we do not have jury trial for civil cases. We, we have here in Brazil, uh, the federal constitution grants jury only in cases, or in cases of willful, willful crimes against life, just crimes against life, homicides and things like that, okay? That is the Article 5th uh, of our Constitution. So, I explained where and how a judge works here in Brazil. That's why I explain it right now. Let's see the desembargador. That is a justice. Desembargador is a justice. It's a very beautiful word. I like that. It sounds good here in Portuguese, desembargador, is a Portuguese word a very, with a very specific meaning, okay? In Portugal, they use the word also, the same word. Uh, as you know, the Portuguese from Portugal is a little different than Portuguese of Brazil, as there are some differences between the English in, in, in England, the British English, and the American English. So, desembargador is a word that is used uh, in Portugal and also here in Brazil. Uh, desembargador is a member of the judiciary power that belongs to an appellate court. That's it. Desembargador is not as the same of judge. Desembargador is a guy, is a professional, is a member of the judiciary system that works in the appellate court. Which appellate court? State appellate court. Okay? State appellate, appellate court. Okay? Just in this case, we use this name. Uh, here in Brazil, just in this case. Nowadays, since the Constitutional Amendment number 45, number 45, the word desembargador is also used to the federal, regional court. Federal, federal regional court. In the past, in the past, just the just the, the members of the state appellate court used the words desembargador. Nowadays, also, the federal regional court also use 
the word desembargador. Well, so I, we saw judge, juiz, we saw desembargador, justice. Let's see now justice, ministro, ministro, the word ministro, okay? So, ministro or justice or minister is used uh, regarding the judiciary power, the word means someone that belongs to the Supreme Federal Court, the paramount court of the land, and for the superior courts, there are four in our system. Okay, so, judge, first level, Federal judge and state judge, or labor judge. Desembargador, second level, let's say in Brazilian situation. State, state, appellate court, or federal, regional court. Ministro, justice, just, just, in two cases. Federal Supreme Court, the paramount court of the land, Federal Supreme Court and also for the Superior Courts, okay? Uh, and for the Superior Courts. How many Superior Courts we have here in Brazil? We have four Superior Court not considering the Supreme, the Federal Supreme Court, that's not superior, it's supreme. We have Superior Court of Justice, Superior Labor Court, Superior Electoral Court, and Superior Military Court. We have four. And the members, the judges that work there are called Minister Justice. Okay? But ministro, here in Brazil, the word ministro, there is another, another meaning, okay? Uh, <clears throat> in fact, the meaning, the, uh, the meaning, uh, better say, the word ministro is more related high related to the executive branch. If you ask someone in the street, uh, what is the meaning of the word ministro? Okay? They will say that is someone that belongs to the executive body, to the executive, executive, uh, executive branch. Okay? Because there is an no law and no tradition to use the word minister to refer to the head of an executive department within the federal level. In the United States of America, the equivalent word is secretary, as the secretary of state, former secretary of state uh, Hillary Clinton, Today is John Kerry, that is the Secretary of State. In the past was Condoleezza Rice. They are, they, they are Secretary of State. Or Secretary of uh, Treasury in the U.S., Larry Summers, that was until one month ago. But in Brazil, we do not use the word secretary to refer to someone that is in the highest public officer in the executive power. We use here the word minister, minister, ministro, minister of treasury, Mr. Guido Mantega, minister of foreign relations, etc. Curiously, we use the word secretary here in Brazil, but just in the state level. For example, the secretary 
of treasury of the state of São Paulo. We don't, we don't use ministro to refer to the secretary of state of uh, uh, treasury in São Paulo or secretary of uh, health secretary or secretary of transportation. So the word secretary in the US is used to refer to someone that belongs, that is in the high, in the high position in the executive branch and also in states, I, I, in the federal level, in the state level. Here in Brazil, the word secretary is used just for the state level. Well, the federal constitution, I have to say, also uses the word minister to refer to the members of the Federal Court of Accounts. Federal Court of Accounts or the Court of Accounts of the Union. Article 73 of our Federal Constitution. But the Court of Accounts does not belong to the judiciary system. Okay? They are called the members as minister, minister, but they do not, they are called court, the institution is called court, but they do not belong to the judiciary system. Let's see now the constitutional, the constitutional guarantees, the constitutional guarantees for judicial independence. The federal constitution grants three important guarantees for judges in order to insulate them from politics and public opinion, so as to be impartial to their judgment without fear of retaliation for unpopular decision. Okay? That's the way that we have these guarantees here in Brazil. To uh, to avoid uh, outside interference in their job. The first guarantee is the life tenure. After two years in office, the judge acquires this guarantee. After that, the judge just loses his her position by a final and unappealable unappealable judicial decision against him or her, okay? So the judge holds the position for good behavior, but to lose the position just after an, an unappealable decision. At the age of 70 years, all public officers have to retire, except elect officers are those who hold the position by political nomination as a minister, secretary, or advisor. The second, the second guarantee is the irremovability. Irremovability. What does it mean? It mean what does it mean? It means that a judge cannot be removed from the place he, she works at. Irremovability. It's a kind of guarantee, a very important one. Let's give an example. Let's give an example with, uh, uh, well, let's suppose. A state judge working in San Diego, for example. Let's give an example in, in, with uh, an American, uh, American series. A judge working in San Diego, California, cannot be removed to Los Angeles and vice versa. A judge working here in, for example, in the city, in Campinas, state of Sao Paulo, he cannot, he, she cannot be removed without his own authorization to another city, for example, the capital, Sao Paulo. If he, she doesn't have this kind of protection, a powerful politician or an entrepreneur, knowing the judge's professional profile, could pressure the judge's superiors in order to transfer him or her 
to another city or another jurisdiction in the same city. Okay? The example, the example above was about different cities, I, I said. Campinas in the interior, in the countryside of São Paulo, and São Paulo the capital. But the irremovability also reaches a judge in a city in order to avoid his removal, his removal from a case. The, the, guarantee, the guarantee is not absolute, as everything in, in law. The board of the court that the judge is linked, the board, the board of the court that the judge is linked to, can remove him, her, by a majority decision. Okay, by a majority decision. In the past, the judge do not have this guarantee. It's a new guarantee that uh, that the federal constitution. Uh, putting in, in force. The third, I said that was three import, constitutional guarantees. I talked about the uh, life tenure, the irremovability, and the third guarantee is the irreducibility of pay. What does it mean? The judge, not, uh, the judge cannot have their, the judges cannot have their salary to put down, okay? <clears throat> but the irreducibility of pay does not exempt, exempt the judge to pay taxes. Together, the three guarantees provide an important instrument in order to assure judiciary independence. They are, they together, are very important to assure the judiciary independence, that the judge can decide, decides without fearing uh, any external interference. That's it. Well, the same article 95 that lists the, guarant the guarantees also indicates the prohibition for judges. Okay? Let's see. Right now, uh, okay, uh, let me get here. Prohibition for judges, okay? We talked about the guarantees, irremovability, irreducibility of pay, and life tenure. Let's, say now, let's see now the prohibition. Judges are not allowed to hold another office <coughs> or position except for a teaching position, a teaching position. Receive or any, on any account or for any reason, court costs or participation in a lawsuit. Engage in political or party activities. The Constitution Amendment number 45, that is, the, that is called the reform of the judiciary system, the Constitution Amendment 45, from uh, 2004, uh, <clears throat> it uh, says that for a period of three years that a retired judge cannot work as a lawyer in the court or tribunal that he or she was a judge. That's another prohibition. It means that just after three years, the retired or discharged judge can perform as a lawyer before the court he/she worked in. Others 
constitutional provisions about judges and courts. Once you become a judge, you have the right to pursue access to a higher court. The federal constitution provides that Article 93 provide that access to the second instance shall obey the rule of seniority and merit alternately. Okay? Seniority and merit alternately. All court trials, no matter who conducts the case, be it a single judge or a group of them in a court, because as I said, there is no panel, uh, no panel jury here in Brazil. We have single judge or we have the court, okay? Shall be public. All, all, the, all, all, all trials shall be public, except when the public interest requires the contrary. In this case, just the interested parties and their lawyers will attend the trial. <clears throat> All the decisions taken by a judiciary authority must be justified under penalty or nullity. All courts in Brazil, I'm talking about court, not a single judge, holds two kinds of jurisdiction, original and appellate. Original jurisdiction means the legal authority to consider the case in first instance. Okay, original jurisdiction. And the appellate jurisdiction. Okay, uh, so original jurisdiction to see the case in the first instance. Appellate jurisdiction means power to review judicial action or any of an inferior court or a single judge. Appellate Courts are vested with authority to remand the decision of a lower court or to remand or to decide totally different from what was previously decided. Let's see an example here. We have a federal judge. Federal judge. So, it takes a decision about something the decision may go to the federal regional court federal regional court the federal regional court in this case will will be a court of appeal so the federal, the federal regional court can remand the decision taken by the federal judge, okay? Uh, the Constitution of the United States, Article 3rd, provides uh, that in all cases affecting ambassadors and uh, other public ministers and consuls, uh, and those which a state shall be party, the Supreme, the Supreme Court of the United States shall have original jurisdiction. The Brazil Constitution, which is, is full of details, provides both jurisdictions. In the United States, the Constitution just says, just talks about the original jurisdiction of the Supreme, Supreme Court. In the Brazilian system, the Brazilian Constitution, as I said, is full of details, provides both jurisdiction, original and appellate, of the Supreme Federal Court and for the superior courts. Okay? Very important thing. Uh, I will talk about the structure 
the structure of the Brazilian judiciary system in the next class. So it was a pleasure to have you here with me today. I hope that the considerations about the judiciary system can be good for you. I hope that you have enjoyed our class today and I see you in another meeting. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.